Well, we're talking about the all-important question, where is heaven, as we're looking at this series on heaven right now. And as we closed last time, we were discussing the fact of heaven being in another dimension, a dimension that maybe it would be referred to as the spiritual realm, the heavenly realms, the scripture calls it heavenly places, but a dimension that is right here among us, even though we can't see it with our physical senses right now, it's a lot closer than what we think. And it interacts in these two realms, the physical realm we live in and the spiritual realm where heaven is at, they interact with one another and God interacts with us from that realm. And, and the angels and demons and all of those things, spiritual beings are in that realm and, and they interact with us here in this present realm. But as we've discussed that this present heaven is only a temporary dwelling place for God's people. It's not the permanent home. One day, Jesus Christ, very soon, is going to return. And when he does, the need for that realm is not going to be, uh, it's not going to need to continue anymore because something is going to transform. God's eternal purpose and desire for where heaven has always intended to be will once again be fulfilled. God's desire is that permanent heaven be right here in this world, this physical existence, this physical universe, this physical planet we know as planet Earth, and to fill the whole of the universe with his glory. Heaven will ultimately be right here where we are. It's just going to be radically, powerfully, and gloriously changed. But it's going to be right here. Remember, the scripture gives us a lot of indication about this. The prophet Isaiah had an opportunity to see a lot of the things that the Lord was going to do in the future. He didn't understand it all, certainly not, but he was revealed by God to, to a great deal concerning this future heaven. In Isaiah 65, 17, it says, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things will not be remembered or come to mind. Now, we'll talk about what that means. Is God going to get rid of this earth and make a brand new world? No, but the world that we're in is going to be radically transformed and changed. The Apostle Paul, in the eighth chapter of Romans, he talks about something concerning the children of God. In Romans chapter 8, verse 19, he says, For the anxious longing of the creation waits eagerly for the revealing of the sons of God. He says, all of creation, all of nature is anticipating. It's excited about the revelation, the full manifestation of the children of God. For the creation, he says, was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope that the creation itself also will be set free from its slavery to corruption into the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and suffers the pains of childbirth together until now. He says all of nature is groaning for the time when something's going to happen, and that something is going to involve the return of Jesus Christ and the establishing of heaven on earth and the revealing, the full manifestation of you and I as the children of the Most High God. Paul says, and not only this, but we also ourselves having the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting eagerly for our adoption as sons and the redemption of our bodies. It's longing for something to happen in this world, for heaven literally to come to earth. As we've mentioned before, the Apostle Peter mentions in his second letter, chapter 3, verse 10, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief in which the heavens will pass away with a roar and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat and the earth and its works will be burned up. Peter says, yes, when the Lord returns, he's not going to destroy, you know, wipe out and get rid of completely and totally the present earth, the heavens or anything like that, but there's going to be a purging. There's going to be a refining, a cleansing of it as a result of his presence. 
Everything that is unclean, evil, sinful, all the effects of the fall, all of that is going to be purged and cleansed from this present creation. It is going to be renewed. It is going to be recreated, as it were, in the perfection that God intended for it to be. And he says, since all these things are to be destroyed in this way, what sort of people ought you to be in all holy conduct and godliness looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the elements will be destroyed by burning, the elements will melt with fervent and intense heat. But according to his promise, we are looking for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. John the Apostle, also in the book of Revelation, he talks about the same thing in the 11th chapter. In verse 15, he says, Then the seventh angel sounded, and I will loud voices in heaven, saying, The kingdom of this world has been now become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever here in this present world. The cha chapter 21, verses 1 and 2 of the same letter of Revelation, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth passed away, and there's no longer any sea now. Trust me, and we'll discuss this too. I don't believe that John is saying that there's not going to be any more oceans, there's not going to be rivers, lakes, ponds, or anything like that. Sea for him represented separation where he was at. There's not going to be any more of that. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, made ready as a bride adorned for her husband. Heaven will ultimately be in this current creation. It's simply going to be a renewed creation. God will come and dwell with us as he intended to from the very beginning. The new Jerusalem coming down. God tabernacling among us. Everything now has come full circle. You start in a garden. You end in a garden. You start in a place where man is walking with God and God is walking with man. And you end with man walking with God and God walking with man. We understand that this present world, where we are right now, is ultimately going to be our future home. But it is going to be radically and gloriously changed by the presence and power of God. So heaven, in its current state, is temporary. One day, it'll be in its permanent state here in this present creation that's going to be renewed. But here's something even more important as I close. Heaven is right now in our lives because the king of the universe the presence of jesus christ by his spirit is within us we are joined to heaven and heaven is within us that realm is one in which we exist we are seated in the heavenly realms in christ jesus and guess what we are now able to bring the blessings of heaven the power of heaven the message of heaven to people all around us, the love of God in heaven, to people all around us. His kingdom has come now within us. The future heaven is now extending its impact here, right now. When we pray for other people, we're tapping into the powers of, the writer of Hebrews says, of the ages to come for blessing people right now when we love people we're tapping into the resources of that realm through the presence of the spirit in our lives to touch people right now i encourage you take the reality of that heavenly realm through the spirit of god dwelling in you and impact other people today where you are let them taste and see the fruit of that place, but more importantly, the reality of the person that makes that place what we call it, heaven.